Thank you everyone for joining us for this EHS interview. I'm Angela Platt. I am the media and web officer for the Ecclesiastical History Society, and I'm also a PhD student at Royal Holloway. And I'm so privileged to be here today with Professor Simon Ditchfield, a professor of early modern history at the University of York. His research interests all relate to perceptions and uses of the past in previous societies, but particularly within the context Context of urban and religious culture in the Italian peninsula from 1300 to 1800. And he was also the president of the Ecclesiastical History Society in 2015 and 16. So thanks so much for joining us, Simon. We're so pleased to have you here. Thank you, Angela. Yes, of course. And just by way of introduction, could I just start by asking you, what are your general research interests? I suppose my general interests are uh, all relate to, as, I, as my profile on my web uh, page says it, you know, perceptions and uses of the past. But I think really it goes back to when I was an undergraduate in the 70s, when still like, very much the Marxism was uh, still could be heard, clear echoes of it at least, uh, particularly as it related to my main area of interest, which was the early modern period and particularly the English Civil War. Um, and so... Uh, I always remember being very frustrated by um, materialist explanations of historical action and historical motivation. Uh, and I always had a particular interest in essentially what came between people's material conditions and their actions, which is really their perceptions of it. So I was always very interested in uh, the history of ideas. And this was confirmed as an undergraduate when uh, I particularly was inspired by the teaching of Peter Biller, uh, um, Gordon Leff, uh, and Richard Fletcher, all of whom were medievalists. Uh, and so that then most of my uh, um, experience then was that. And I just had one exception, which is when halfway through my time as an undergraduate, when John Bossi arrived, and I, um, in fact, took a course with him on Italian history rather than English Catholicism. Uh, so that really, uh, I think, um, has shaped my interests ever since. Thank you. And so thinking more specifically, as we are the Ecclesiastical History Society, what led to your interest in studying ecclesiastical history or church history? Well, I think that, um, I mean, my central to my interest in history of ideas was the history of history writing. And uh, I began my MPhil thesis uh, by looking at uh, an urban chronicle post-Renaissance chronicle uh, of the North Italian town of Piacenza. Uh, and in fact, it soon became apparent that the author was more interesting than the um, chronicle. And the author was uh, a very senior inquisitor. Um, and although I was unable to look at his career for my PhD, because at that time in the late 80s, the um, archives of the Holy Office were still closed to scholars of the Roman Inquisition, um, I then did look at the next person who wrote uh, about the history of this town, Piacenza, uh, and I discovered that the reason why he was writing this three-volume ecclesiastical history of the town was in fact uh, for liturgical reasons, uh, and specifically he'd been given the job by his bishop to rewrite the uh, saints' lives of the local saints and effectively protect their cult from being culled by um, Rome, which is then trying to um, very much reform the breviary and reform local um, liturgies and standardize things. So I realized then that actually uh, the main, one of the main motives for uh, writing of history uh, and rewriting of history in the Reformation age uh, was religious. And so in the intro, um, I did note that you are a professor at the University of York. Mm -hmm. Could you talk to us a bit about uh, your career journey? What led you to become professor at York? Well, I suppose just sticking at it. it uh, I was, uh, had been working uh, at York uh, in various roles from being a British County postdoctoral fellow. I arrived in 91. Uh, I'd actually been an undergraduate here uh, in the late 70s. Uh, but I went away and I did my under postgraduate work um, in London at the Warburg Institute, which is, of course, is one of the premier institutes for the history of ideas, specifically the history of the classical tradition. Um, and I um, went back to York in 91, 
Uh, and then I wasn't professor until about 25 years later. Um, but uh, I'd spent at least seven years in short-term roles after I was a, a, post, a postdoctoral fellow. I, I filled in for temporary jobs, and then I ran a project on heritage studies as applied history, again, the theme of history writing and, and the public consumption of the past. And then finally, in 1998, I got a permanent post here. Um, and very soon after that, my first, uh, and to date, only monograph came out in 1995. Uh, and then I've really been following through the implications of that uh, and done a lot of work on saints cults uh, in early modern Italy and using saints cults as a way of understanding um, the making of Roman Catholicism as a world religion. And indeed, I've been working uh, since about 2006 uh, on this big project, uh, which uh, when it's finished, it will hopefully be published by the Oxford University Press um, series. Um, the uh, st um, I think studies in the Western Church, um, and really, it's the first attempt to really um, conceive of the um, Counter Reformation in global and non Eurocentric terms. And for me, one of the keys to understand this is to look how um, the cult of saints uh, is a way in which of thinking about how um, universal ideas of of Rome and Roman. Uh, liturgy and Roman belief uh, could work together with local cults uh, all over the globe. Um, you've nicely segued to my next question, mentioning your time as a student at York. Uh, could you talk to us a bit about what did you find most challenging or even encouraging about studying as a student, whether it be your undergraduate period at York or as a postgraduate and PhD researcher? Well, I think it's very easy to romanticize and one shouldn't because I have to say uh, in the 70s, um, the teaching was pretty hit and miss. Uh, of course, I wasn't paying any fees. In fact, I was receiving a grant, so I was paid to be there. Uh, and I was, of course, by definition, the fact I'm now a professional academic, I was a bit of a nerd. I spent a lot of my time in the library. Um, and so I found it very exciting uh, being with people uh, who were leaders in their field. Uh, Gordon Leff, for example, the history of medieval thought. Um, but Richard Fletcher uh, was then gearing up to write his fantastic stuff about uh, Spanish medieval history. Um, and then latterly with John Bossy, um, I found it really good to be able to speak one-on-one -on -one with these people. Um, I don't I have to say I have very few memories of any inspiring lecturers, but then lecturing really wasn't a big thing um, at York at the time. It was very much the one-to-one -one um, tutorial and in fact York was then known as sort of Oxbridge on Ooze. So I know you've just called yourself a professional historian as it were but what do you like to do outside of research? <laughs> well my wife would say I'm just married to my job and do very little outside. Uh, I enjoy, um, I have enjoyed travel in the past, uh, uh, um, very fond of having lived in Italy for two years. Uh, I return there as often as I can to attend conferences and even to do research, particularly Rome, you could say, is my hobby in many respects. Uh, but I don't really, I am rather dull in that sense. I mean, I obviously I'm uh, very fond of, uh, of such Italian things as, as, as food and wine, um, but uh, I'm remarkably sort of uh, boring in the sense that I don't have hinterland in the sense of hobbies. I've never, I've never liked hobbies. Um, I find uh, is enough to nourish me in history. And as a final question, I wonder if you could think about any advice or, or thoughts that you would give to current sort of PhD or postgraduate students or early ECRs who are interested in going the track of becoming a professional ecclesiastical historian, as it were. Well, I can say straight away, it took me several years before I screwed the courage uh, to do uh, postgraduate research. Um, and uh, at first, I thought I could only justify it by, uh, in terms of being able to go and teach it, I couldn't justify it as an intellectual experience in its own right. But then after several years, increasingly frustrated years, as a teacher of English as a foreign language down in London, I realized that really my passion was for finding out more about the past and studying it. And so uh, I went and started off my MPhil, then a two-year course at the Warburg, and I did it really 
uh, with a view to just enjoying it. Uh, and I didn't say I'm doing this in order to get a job at the end. And I think really, uh, particularly in the current job market, although there's quite a few similarities between the job market now, even pre-COVID, but the job market now and the job markets it was uh, in, the, in the doldrums of Thatcherdom in the mid 80s when there weren't any jobs uh, either. And so I think the thing to do is if you get the opportunity to, to do it, uh, you do it for its own sake um, and then uh, see what happens afterwards because it is a, a, a it's, well, it can sometimes be a, a, a lonely activity doing your own research. It can be also, in my experience, is immensely rewarding. Uh, and indeed, uh, I was all ready to uh, become a professional tour guide because latterly I was supporting myself in, in my research uh, by taking tour, study tours of Italy, uh, mostly of Italy. Um, and indeed, I was prepared, preparing myself to work for the tour company full time when, to my surprise, I got a Bridgeton County postdoc and that really set me up. Because then after a couple of years, I realized this is really what I want to do. Uh, I've always enjoyed teaching. Uh, as an activity relating to students. Uh, but I would say that, um, you know, and if, you, if you've got as far, particularly as being an ECR and you have now uh, managed to secure uh, some kind of perch, even if it's a temporary one, um, on, on the, sort of the greasy pole, then hang on in there. It is an extremely uh, rewarding uh, job. Um, it's, I'm now um, finding quite a few of my, my uh, contemporaries are retiring. I'm 62, uh, and I have to say, they are really their careers, uh, with one uh, one or two exceptions, have been remarkably unfulfilling. Uh, and these are all graduates, and so I think that the academic uh, line of business is a, 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 a remarkably um, interesting and engaging career, and I have no regrets from having uh, pursued it and stuck with it, even though, as I said earlier, uh, it was not smooth to begin with. Uh, it did take me seven years before I landed uh, a, a permanent job, as they call them these days. Um, thank you again, Professor Simon Ditchfield, for joining us for this interview. And thanks for watching our viewers. Uh, please do follow us on social media or check out our website, ecclesiasticalhistorysociety.com. Thank you.